Hawaii, the state of clean energy, here at 4 o'clock on a given Wednesday. Ray Starling is my co-host. Hi, Ray. Hi, Jay. How and are you? Pat uh, Cross is the energy program manager of Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, HNEI. And we're going to talk today about uh, connecting wave energy with Pat Cross. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, the full title is New Innovative Devices, Innovative Devices for Connecting Wave Energy, comma, with Pat Cross. <laughs> So, qu'est-ce que say, you know, wave energy? I remember, okay, back in the day, this has to be mm, 2002 or three, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, it was even before the Renewable Energy Initiative. And I was a party at Aloha Tower, and I ran into a guy, he was a tech guy from California, and he was telling me they had these, these devices. And um, you, you, you anchored them to the ground, to the, to the undersea, uh, the bottom, and, and then they floated on the top and they were buoyant. And as, as the wave, you know, moved, uh, it would generate electrical current. And there was a little generator inside, a little pod, and then uh, through a cable, it would feed the current, you know, back to the shore. And he was working on this. I said, that's just great. I was so impressed. That's a fabulous idea. What a great, why don't you do that everywhere? He said, well, they corrode. And we haven't been able to deal with the corrosion just yet. Yeah. And that was, what, 15 years ago. Anything changed, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, a lot more things have corroded. Since, uh, okay. Uh, so. <laughs> so you're working no. with wave energy. What's, yes. what's the state of wave energy in Hawaii? Well, in the state of wave energy in Hawaii is, uh, is, is that we are... We have re reinvigorated the testing of these kinds of concepts like that, these wave energy conversion devices, through the fact that the Navy has now installed the infrastructure for a three-berth test bed uh, off the Marine Corps base in Kaneohe. Uh, so we now have those in place, three test berths, all cabled to shore, as you say. We have two devices that are in the water now being tested, uh, and they are experiencing some some successes and some failures, and we're learning from them, and uh, and we're looking forward to sort of the next generation of wave energy devices that are coming starting in 2017, and a few have been identified beyond. Um, so we're. We're really just getting going with these first two smaller scale prototype devices, uh, learning a lot from those, um, but there's a long way to go. And yes, corrosion is still a challenge. And yes, just survivability in the difficult ocean environment is still a challenge. And that's why wave energy still has a long way to go, but there's kind of a renewed push. Why? Globally. Why is there a renewed push? There's more and more of a recognition that the resource is enormous. It's, uh, I mean, it's all over the world um, in, in varying degrees, for sure. I mean, some areas have, have very, very energetic ocean wave environments, others less so. But there may, be, there may be potential for economically viable wave energy electrical production in a wide range of wave regimes. So the global potential with, the, with so much of our population in the world close to coastlines is enormous. So the, the prize is big, but the challenges are, are big too. So, uh, so I think that's we why to, we're not there yet. I, I think it's, a, it's an important point that you can't do uh, wave energy in, in Omaha. No, it's hard. You, you might find a lake and get a little something. <laughs> you know, the other thing is, the other thing you mentioned, is it, it just um, it sets up my Woody Allen way of looking at things, is that suppose we got these devices and we put them in every square inch of coastline everywhere in the world, millions and millions and millions of them, <clears throat> and they're all drawing from wave energy. You think the ocean would go flat? <laughs> in other words, it would use up all the wave energy and then everything would kind of stop, would it get clutched. There'd be no more coastal no, erosion. No more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's impossible. It, it's really unlimited, isn't it? It, it is essentially unlimited. There, uh, it, certainly if you had an array of a large number of devices off a coastline, you would have, and we haven't gotten there, so we can't really measure that effect yet, but we can model it. 
uh, and you would begin to have some effect on the wave regime that's arriving at the shoreline, um, particularly if the, that wave array is fairly close to the shoreline. Um, but so far, that's, that's all a long way off. And that's part of the environmental consideration that will need to take place mm -hmm. as, as you move forward and you, become, you begin to demonstrate the viability of individual devices, then you can start talking about deploying large numbers of them. And that's when you'll need to, to study those kinds of effects and see if there are, are detrimental impacts of, of deploying them in numbers. Well, you said close to shore, and I think that's been you know, sort of an operative assumption here. But, but Al Yee, the engineer who deals in floating concrete and is working with OTEC off the area, Sierra, Sierra Gar Garcia, Diego Garcia, yeah. Diego Garcia, uh, and and elsewhere. Well, I think he's also trying one in Okinawa. They cost a lot of money, um, but the idea is it's a platform and it's re removed from land, and it generates hydrogen. That's the product you get from this platform, and the hydrogen, of course, is fungible and sort of a um, byproduct is, is that it's storable. You know? Um, so suppose I, I take your model that you've been describing with, you know, the problems of, uh, you know, what's the word, um, of rust and corrosion and all that, and I build all that in. Um, but then I, I make a, a large and expensive uh, concrete floating platform, and I put lots of these things around the platform, and they generate hydrogen. And then I, you know, somebody stops by every now and then and picks up the hydrogen, which is good everywhere in the world, theoretically, including Omaha. Um, isn't that really the future, instead of limiting it to the coastline? That's, that's a future. I mean, there are plenty of people who are exploring those sorts of offshore energy generation. We, I mean, you could have wind and solar and waves. Right, the whole enchilada, and, yeah. And OTEC all working yeah. together to, yeah, yeah. to uh, create energy offshore far from land. And yes, hydrogen fueling station, uh, yeah. an electrical recharge station, uh, whatever you want, might want to do with it. Those are interesting concepts, and those very well might be earlier niche markets for wave energy. Um, but for the most part, I mean, all the testing we're doing to date has been close to shore. It's certainly all the grid-connected testing, and, and I should point out that this test site we have here is grid-connected. It's the only one in the country like it. Um, and by definition, it's close to shore, um, and so it's it's aimed at demonstrating or, or, or exploring the viability of wave energy devices at, in terms of their potential to feed power into a power grid. Nearby. But yes, there are, there are myriad other potential applications of, of wave power. You, on a much smaller scale, you could use wave power, and people do, to, uh, at least in, a, in, a, in an exploratory way, to generate power for an offshore buoy, say, uh, that measures meteorological conditions or, or that sort of thing. So there, there may be, and the, and the Navy has interest in offshore power generation for autonomous vehicles and that sort of thing. So there may be offshore applications of wave energy for sure. But yeah. most of the emphasis to date really has been on the the eventuality of, of grid connected. So how, how far has the science advanced? I mean, it's been well over 10 years since my conversation with that guy in Aloha Tower. Um, and I mean, I thought from a mechanical point of view, he had a workable product. It's just a, maybe a, a material science issue there. Yeah. Um, but but what, has, what has been done? Who is working on what to make these things closer to productive? Uh, lots of people are working on it. Um, it's, there's been a big emphasis in the United Kingdom, especially in Scotland. Uh, the, uh, the, really the, the, the fathers of the modern push to wave energy, I guess you could say, is the European Marine Energy Center, uh, which was initially federally funded within the UK uh, and is now operating under its own steam. It's challenged to do so, but but steam that, is in a, you know, kind of an interesting word. In context, yeah, I shouldn't but. say steam. <laughs> Operating it under its own wave power. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that test, that's a test site, not unlike the one we have here um, in much more energetic waters off of the Orkney Islands in Scotland. Um, so they were testing devices that were being developed by mostly UK companies. A, a, a well-known company in this business is called Palamis. Another one is Aquamarine. Both of those devices, which look 
nothing like each other and work nothing like each other uh, had some varying degrees of success and iterations and improvements and uh, and then ultimately at the end of 2015 uh, or was it 2014 uh, both companies went out of business basically lack so, of funding lack or? of funding you know they weren't just, in the profit mode yet anyway right no they weren't in a profit mode they were they were getting a regular government investment and some private investment and to keep their technology moving forward but ultimately that kind of ran out governments changed um, they went out of business so there there have been some sort of high profile failures in the last couple of years and the one you mentioned was from Maui it was a Australian company they took it took it away back to Australia and it sank yeah yeah, they tested the it on the, off the south side of Australia, yeah. uh, Ocean Links, Ocean and, Links uh, yeah. and yeah, so that com that's another company that's out of business. Yeah. So, so there have been some failures. Where have uh, the advances been made? Is it in material science? Is it in the engineering of the, of you know the design of the of the pod, so to speak, or the cabling, uh, or I don't know where. Where where, where have they been spending their time uh, improving the engineering of these things? The the the, the answer would be different. Uh, for, for different companies. Uh, some are really emphasizing some things that were overlooked in early planning, such as mooring systems and serviceability. Uh, so, so I think people are learning from some of those past failures and they are factoring those into their designs, but it's been a slow moving push wi okay. without enough government investment perhaps. Mm. Uh, but it's encouraging now in that, well, a few things. One is that we have this test site in the U.S. The U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. Navy have gotten interested in the form of sending funds toward wave energy. And so there are some really interesting and innovative concepts that are in development now, slated to test here in Hawaii. Um, so there's, there's kind of renewed reason for optimism. And people are hopefully coming up with some smart ways to deal with things like corrosion and, mm -hmm. and, and just durability at sea. Ray, you, uh, uh, before we go to the break, you had a question beforehand I thought was really important. Well, I uh, was just wondering, in terms of the money that the government here in the United States is putting towards this, uh, is it pretty much the, the, your part of the, the process, the HNEI, sort of sponsoring these places where people can come and test their units? Or are you involved in actually putting money into the units themselves? The, uh, more the former, although not quite. Uh, our role, and, and thank you for asking, and I need to clarify that. It's, so it's the Navy's site. They're the ones who put the infrastructure in place, the cables, the moorings. Um, but the, the, those same two entities that are involved in funding companies to come test with that infrastructure, Department of Energy and, and U.S. Navy, Naval Facilities Engineering Command, NAVFAC, those same two entities are funding us to support the testing mm -hmm. in the form of performance monitoring, both power performance and, and survivability, durability of the devices, um, but also environmental data collection, such as collecting acoustic data and doing ecological dives and looking at how things might be evolving around the devices. And then logistics support. So we, we have a subcontract with a Honolulu company, Sea Engineering, to outfit a, a dedicated vessel to, to, be, to support all this stuff, all, all the, the testing of devices, the deployment of our environmental gear, all that. So when, that's our role. When we're, we come we're back, support. I'm, I'm going to ask you if Jay and I had a, a device we wanted to test, how would we go about trying to get okay. connected out there at uh, Kaneohe? Wow, okay. that's a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> They'll all come back. We'll take a Aloha. My name is Carl Campagna, and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, the Politics in Hawaii series. Join us each week as we have guest after guest talking about the policy and the politics of our state, of our islands, and of what really matters to each of us. So please join us each week and engage in that conversation. Mahalo. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. 
We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Nine seven eight, bingo. We're back. Ray, Ray Starling, my co-host. You have these fabulous questions. These questions that you know that find the meaning of life or the meaning of energy, anyway. And uh, we left we left uh, with, a, with a cliffhanger. And I wonder if you can repeat that because okay. some people may not remember what the cliffhanger was. Now, Jay and I often have a drink together, and we talk about things that we might want to do. And let's say we had a device that we wanted to. Uh, get tested to see if we could make wave uh, into energy uh, out somewhere um, out in the ocean. And you guys are sponsoring these three sites where you say the Navy is, and you, you guys are operating it for them. Um, what would we have to do to sort of get in line or, or try to compete for that? Because um, it looks like that that's a great place because you need active in the ocean testing before you can say we've got this thing licked. Yes, I, open ocean testing is, is, is a critical step to, before you can advertise that you're ready to go commercial. Um, and so that's what the test site can provide. It's, 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 it's way pre-commercial still at this stage. But anyway, to answer your question, how would you come, if you have a, an idea it's got to reach a certain level of maturity before you're going to draw the attention of, of the Navy or the Department of Energy uh, to obtain funding. So all of the companies that, are, that have been selected so far to come test at WETS have gone through a competitive funding competition. They've written proposals to either DOE or Navy um, to, to do the testing. So uh, if a very well-funded entity had a, a concept that had reached a level of maturity where it made sense to test at WETS, um, and they did not, they didn't need the Navy or the Department of Energy support funding. Then uh, that hasn't come up yet, but it it, it would be, they, given that it's the Navy's site and the Navy holds the environmental assessment, and they would still have to go through the Navy. To, to utilize the Navy's test infrastructure. And, I, and, and to be honest, I'm not even sure if that's legally possible. But uh, the short answer is keep your eyes open for the next Department of Energy or Navy funding opportunity related to wave energy um, and develop your, your concept and aim it toward testing at WETS. Yeah, is, so, is it going to, sorry, go ahead, Ray. No, well, I, I was uh, wondering sort of you, you've seen a few of these come and go. Do you have uh, sort of an image of what it's likely to look like out there? Is it going to be something that's bobbing on the surface? Is it going to be something like the, the wave gen where the, the water comes in and pushes air through a turbine and that sort of thing? Is there something that seems to be working better than other types of uh, technologies? Uh, unfortunately, I think it's it's... Uh, this is an, an unsatisfying answer, but it's too early to say. Uh, it's we really just have these first two devices that are oh, sitting here. Can we I talk guess. about them? Sure. Yeah, One I looks mean, like it could be useful in the French Revolution, <laughs> of 1789. I think it was the guillotine. Yeah. There, Madame yeah. Defarge could be watching. Using Whoa! <laughs> right. Actually, I've seen these offshore. Yes, yeah. you have. Yeah. These are the two devices that are that are offshore now. Um, at the test site. So uh, this this guy, this is from Northwest Energy Innovations, went in the water in um, the first of June last year, 2015. So a year and a half in the water. How Very, tall is it really? It's about 50 feet tall. About mm -hmm. about the top 12 feet or so stick out of the water. Um, so it's it just it has this float that rests on the surface of the water and rocks back and forth uh, and generates electricity through a hydraulic system inside. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one works completely differently. Uh, it's, it's got, it's called the Lifesaver. It's from a Norwegian company. Um, 
through the prime contract is an American company called Sound and Sea Technologies, but a Norwegian company called Fred Olson that developed this concept. And uh, each of these power takeoffs, there are three of them as shown here, and this is the configuration that's in the water now. Each one of them contains a winch, which is uh, taut, connected to anchors at the bottom. So as the thing rocks in the waves, um, those, those winch in and out, and so it's a direct drive. There's no hydraulics involved. It's a direct drive power generation. So those are, both of those devices are called point absorbers, which how, are like you're talking about. Uh, how big is that one? Cross. Uh, you know, these are very similar scale. This is about 50 feet across. Mm. So these are actually roughly uh, to correct scale. Yeah, is um, this just trying to test different technologies at the same time or is it is it no there it is Ray I think I think yeah there's, oh, it there. there's a photo good you're able to bring that up that's how it looks in the water so it's about 16 meters across in diameter and no there's it's it's just one technology so the same guts okay. are in each of those power takeoffs uh, it can house as many as five they went with three for this test um, and then all the electronics are in this watertight enclosure here. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so they're both point absorbers. They're both buoys that float on the surface and, mm -hmm. and move around and convert motion into electrical generation. That's what they have in common. Um, and then the next device is more like what you're talking about. The next device that we look forward to seeing from an Irish company called Ocean Energy is an oscillating water column. So mm -hmm. it's, it's an air chamber where the waves force that air through a turbine, an air turbine, to generate electricity. And the scale of this is much larger. Like these, are, these are 40, 50 ton devices. That this is gonna, the next one's going to be more like 650 tons. Uh, and a lot more power production, potentially. You know, it hasn't been mm -hmm. demonstrated yet, but they've tested it at quarter scale in Ireland. And so that's a completely different concept. I mean, you know, to power generation. And, and we just don't know what the winners are going to look like yet. Mm. It's, and, the, uh, you're, and you're going to be looking for uh, longevity, corrosion issues. you would be looking for that's key, how yeah. efficient it is, the yeah. return on investment for, you know, a certain amount invested and all. Right. I mean, I mentioned the, the Palamas earlier, the Scottish device that really uh, demonstrates some, some very good uh, power production, but it just... It, did, it, it couldn't demonstrate long-term survivability. It, they had to keep bringing it in and, and doing things to it, and, and that was expensive, and yeah. We so have a few more uh, photos we can look at to try to get more detail. Yeah, yeah. You know, th this is uh, basically the layout of the, of the site with the three test berths at the three different water depths, and some of the photos there around the corners uh, give you some idea. That there's a, well, at the two deep berths, there are... Uh, three of those floats as depicted in the upper left picture and there's three anchors for each test for each deep berth that look like the upper right photograph big big heavy Bruce anchors drag embedment anchors and then our shore site is actually a converted or renovated not converted really but a World War II bunker mm -hmm. uh, on the Marine Corps base mm -hmm. so we have some office space and the grid tie it takes place in that building okay question just popped in my head. Have you ever had a situation where a storm of such magnitude or wave of such magnitude was projected to hit here where you've had to go out and take these things into port to make sure that they didn't rip apart? Have Not you yet. That? Not have you yet. had any that have actually been pulled off by uh, too much power in the wave? Not yet, <laughs> fortunately, no, that hasn't happened. I, I mean, when these guys design these devices, they're designing for 100-year storm kind of conditions. So they're trying, that, and that's one of the design challenges, is designing something that can survive that 100-year storm, uh, but also efficiently produce power all the rest of the time. Um, so I think all these developers would say, no, they don't want to, come in when the big storm comes. Some people are looking at methods to submerge the device below mm, the roughest condition. Yeah, like yeah. a submarine. Again. Or possibly, yeah. you know, some others may be designing systems that are easy to recover, to bring ashore if, if a really big mm -hmm. hurricane or mm -hmm. something is coming. 
Um, but most people are just designing a system to, that, can, that they feel can survive those kinds of conditions. Because that's a moving target in the sense that <clears throat> we have climate change storms coming. I don't want to say soon, but it may be soon. And if we, you know, invest, I mean, one of these things must cost a fair amount of money, and the bigger ones will cost more. Sure. And you put it out there, and A, uh, if there's a tsunami, that would just throw it up on the beach, you know, as you suggested, Ray. Um, but B, um, you know, a good, a good swell, take it apart. And uh, that'd be the end of that. And you effectively, it would be a total loss, really, if, it, if that kind of thing happened. Because if it, if it, you know, if it got off its moorings, ho, ho. It would crash somewhere, sure. and that'd be the end of it. That'd be a problem. If you and if you had a city, for example, or a base, for that matter, relying on the, you know, continual flow of power off this, uh, it, would, it could be disappointed any day because of a big storm. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to survive storms, and and if there are some high-profile failures to do so like that, um, that would be a setback for the for the whole push toward. Before before we go to our summary, Ray's ready to give a summary here. Um, just one other thing, Trump, you've heard that name? Uh, <laughs> vaguely, he's on a hotel, I think. Yeah. How is uh, President-elect Trump, do you think, going to affect the Navy's initiative on this? Well, it's a good question. You, know, you can't avoid politics these days, can you? No, um, <laughs> no I, I mean, obviously, the, 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 the gut reaction to a Trump victory is not one of encouragement for renewables. Um, However, there are plenty of good people around who will continue to try to push the development. And maybe the emphasis is more on the business opportunity and less on climate change, for example. Uh, but the push will still be there. Very interesting mm -hmm. point, Pat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, oh, and you mentioned Navy funding. I mean, maybe we're in the future, in the near future, going to get more of our funding through that DOD avenue rather than DOE. Yeah, so, another know. interesting point. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. That's my summary. Okay, Ray. <laughs> okay, well, uh, obviously, we're right in the middle of some good questions, and uh, I think we need to have Pat back uh, as frequently as we can get him, just to talk, continue the conversation, because I've, I've got a lot of other questions that I'd like to ask. Well, first of all, you know, uh, before we go, when you come back, Talk to us about what you think you've got locked down pretty well in, in terms of what it takes to, to get this going. I take it that the cables and the electricity, bringing the electricity in from the site is pretty much done. I mean, you're, you don't have that much trouble doing it. You're right. And it's just a matter of transferring that movement into electricity. But when, when you way. come back, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. What, what's already ready to go, and what are the things that we still need to work on? So okay. when, you, when you come back, I, because I think wave energy is a big deal. I think it could really help, certainly for our islands, and I'd love to see it go. And uh, you're, so you're right at the... Uh, we're at the, at the pointy end of the spear, yeah. as we used to say yeah. in the Navy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're the only place in the country where these things are going in the water, and that's fun. You know, yeah. It's neat to be yeah. involved. Yeah. So good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we forget, it's an unlimited supply of energy out there. We've got to really just find a way to tap into it. The sun keeps yeah. making more of it. That's uh, Pat Cross, Energy Program Manager at Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and Ray Starley. We're talking about new innovative devices for connecting wave energy with Pat Cross. It's all connected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.